Hello everyone. Today we're going to be dealing with a very annoying problem when preparing for any Olympiad or even for math in general, which is how do I remember so many formulas? In the thumbnail, you see that I've included the quadratic formula, the binomial theorem, as well as your trigo ratios as some examples. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we can more efficiently remember all these formulas or identities or definitions or whatever they may be. So the theme for today is basically efficient memorization. Now before we say anything too mathematical, I'm not an expert on developing a photographic memory or retaining information for a longer time, but the most straightforward mnemonics are always useful. So mnemonics or just some other form of anchoring to whatever it is you may think is useful. For example, for the trigonometric ratios, we often have this short form socatoa, which stands for the fact that in a right angled triangle, if we have an angle theta, we label the sides, the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. We can say that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, that's the so, and then cosine theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and tangent theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now this is a definition. It's not really a formula, it's actually the meaning of the name sine cosine and tangent. So we have no choice. Right? There's no way, for example, to derive in biology what the name endoplasmic reticular means. Right? If you don't know what it means, you don't know what it means. So you have to find a way to remember it. And so ka toa is an example of just how you can make it a bit easier. Another well-known for Olympiads, but not so well-known mnemonic in so-called real life um, is Stewart's theorem. And Stewart's theorem is very commonly memorized as the following rather humorous equation. Man plus dad equals to bomb plus sink, where all of these represent multiplications. Now, these refer to a geometric relation where if I draw a triangle and we label the sides A, B, and C as in the usual way, then this is A, this is B, and this is C. If we were to draw a line from A to a point on B, C, which I shall call D, this length from A to D we call lowercase d, and then this we call m and this we call n. Now, in any such situation, you get this property which is known as Stewart's theorem. And what it does, for example, is that if I told you that you have a triangle where the sides are 7, 12, and 16, and then I say that now we're going to draw it to this location where this is, say, uh, 10 and 6, you would be able to find this length just by substituting everything in. 10 times 6 times 16 plus d times 16 times d is equal to 12 times 10 times 12 plus 7 times 6 times 7. Right? And you can solve for d. I have uh, no need to tell you how to solve this equation. My job here is to tell you how to remember this equation because everyone happily says man plus dad equals to bomb plus sink. And if you think about it for a second, there's a very obvious potential problem. If I were to just erase this off, do you remember which is M and which is N? Right now you may, but do you think you're going to remember a month from now? Three months from now? So this brings me to the second point. It's this configuration, by the way but we may not 
be able to remember that. So if we have forgotten, then what do I do? How am I going to rescue myself if I have forgotten which is M and which is N? Now the answer usually lies in just picking some special case. So this is the next point. Remember 70% of the identity. Now usually this is not such a difficult task. So for example, I've not done chemistry for many years, but there is still some remnants of things like redox reactions, acid-base reactions, um, organic chemistry mechanisms, alkenes and alkenes, all this just kind of float around. Right? It's just easy to remember some part of it. The trouble is getting it exactly. So let's say for Stewart's theorem, I'm drawing it again here. And let's say you cannot remember whether it's M or N. You only remember that, okay, uh, man plus dad equals to bomb plus sink but you forgot which is which. Now what you can do is to test it on a very special case. For example, let's say you thought this is what it is. right? So you thought the M and N are in this order. Now test it using a very special case where instead of your point D being here, shift your point D to be here as well. So a special case, and in this special case, it means that M is the whole thing and N is zero because there's nothing left. Now test it here and see whether it works. If you try testing it here, you're going to get DAD equals to BMB and I cancel it off. I get B equals to D, but I look at this and say, no, B is not equals to D. So this is actually telling you that, sorry, this is wrong. Now, conversely, if you had actually thought that it was the other way around and you tested it here, you thought that N is equal to A and M equals to zero, and you put M equals to zero here, you get now DAD equals to C and C, A is equal to N, and C equals to D. So this is correct and tells you that, well, that's the correct position. The correct position in the not contrived case where D equals to B would be that N's on the left closer to B and M's on the right closer to C. So this would be the correct configuration. Now you can use this quite a lot. For example, if you remember that your quadratic formula is something to do with uh, x equals to minus b plus or minus square root of something squared minus 4ac over 2 either a or b and you cannot remember whether this let's say is a or b and this one is A or B, right? A very possible scenario if you are new to the quadratic formula. You just remember certain elements of it. You remember that it was very messy, so you remember a big square root, you remember plus or minus, but you don't remember whether it's A or B. Well, pick the simplest scenario to figure things out. Now, your quadratic equation looks like this. Now, you realize that for a quadratic equation to be a quadratic equation, a is not zero, but B can be zero. Now if B is zero and the denominator is zero, we are in trouble because we would be dividing by zero. So this would tell you that, okay, the denominator was not B, it should probably be A. And then next up, how do I test the inside of this square root, is it A or B? Now, the answer is very simple, just pick the easiest quadratic that you can possibly think of. For example, I'm going to pick x squared minus 1 equals to 0, which is when a equals to 1, b equals to 0, and c equals to minus 1. This is obviously going to give you x equals to 1 or minus 1. Now with this 
I want to just test both cases just to see which is the correct one. If I forgot, then uh, when I put it into here, if I tried, this would be zero. This one would be two. This would be something squared minus four times one times minus one. So it's plus four. Now I look at it and say, do I want this to be one squared plus four or zero squared plus four? And it's pretty obvious you want this to actually be zero squared plus four to get one or minus one. So that confirms to you that in your faulty memory where you forgot is it A or B? It's B. You might be thinking, well, I should just then memorize the quadratic formula. Why go through all this fuss? And you are correct. This is meant for things that you have forgotten. This is obviously not meant for things you have memorized. But at any point of your life, there will be some identities that you remember 70% of. Take for example, your Vieta's formulas. Now, your sum of roots is equal to, well, something like plus or minus, is it B over A or C over A? The product of roots, which one is which? Well, use the suggestion that I've just given and pick, let's say, a simple quadratic like x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0 and test it out. This is the second thing. Now, the last thing before we conclude is just to realize that certain properties kind of are equivalent to each other or just flow into one another. For instance, if let's say we think of our trigo identities, we can derive many of them from each other. In other words, you want to have or to get one third of the amount of effort to memorize stuff. For instance, if we have remembered that sine x plus y is equal to sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. Now, you want to be able to generate sine x minus y and you've forgotten whether it should be sine x cosine y minus cosine x sine y or is it cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y, you can't remember? Well, apart from testing, like what we saw earlier, an alternative is just to realize that this is x plus negative y and then use the previous identity. Now, of course, this requires you to then know what to do with cosine of a negative angle and sine of a negative angle. You need to know that cosine of a negative angle is still itself and sine of the negative angle becomes negated. You still need to know something. But this is already going to reduce the likelihood of an error because you can get from one thing to another thing. Let's say if you have your double angle formula, it is sine x plus x. So you can put it into here and you get sine x cosine x plus cosine x sine x and this is 2 sine x cosine x and you see that the good news is that you can use this to derive this but you can also use this to check this if you remember the double angle formula but forgot what is the compound angle formula so by remembering certain things you always have the choice of getting from one to another. And a similar example even for just our straightforward algebraic identities. Right? If we have got x cubed plus y cubed and x cubed minus y cubed. Now, if you remembered one of the identities, let's say you remembered that this is x minus y times something and you don't remember what is x cubed plus y cubed. Well, by doing long division, you can first fill in the blank down here and then x cubed plus y cubed is x cubed minus negative y cubed which means that you replace y by negative y below and that would become x plus y x squared plus x times negative y plus negative y squared so you can use just very little information to derive quite a lot now, we're all busy people, so I 
think that it is useful to always think about how little do I need to memorize? Because when the SMO comes, it's always possible that we suddenly blank out whether it's through lack of time, lack of sleep or anxiety and we want to know what's the backup, how can we get what we want. So that's all for me here. Feel free to share any tips that you have in terms of remembering formulas and see you next time for the next bunch of SMO tips and suggestions.